So, uh, good afternoon, afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the European Commission's webinar on AI for student engagement and motivation. The webinar is organized by the European School Education Platform, which we invite you to take a look at at your convenience. Uh, my colleague Marta will post the necessary links in the chat. And today is a very special opportunity for the eTuning community to explore the role of AI and how AI tools can be used to enhance student engagement through personalized learning experiences. Uh, you will learn some effective prompts and hands-on activities um, to create um, activities for your e-twinning projects. And uh, without any further delay, I would like to welcome uh, Simone Pliegel. Uh, Simone is an experienced teacher in English, German, philosophy and ethics from Germany. And between 2004 and 2018, she was um, an e-twinning and Erasmus Plus ambassador for the Bavaria region in Germany. She has transitioned into the role of coordinator for, at the PASH schools in Northwest Europe at the Goethe Institute of London, where she runs Erasmus Plus projects for VR and AR for language development. Um, Simona, uh, the stage is all yours. Thank you very much, Kira, for the kind introduction and for inviting me today. Um, yeah, I'm quite amazed that so many people from so many e-twinners from across Europe are there according to the chat. So that's really great. And I'm very happy to present. So maybe I would just quickly go through the agenda with you so that you know um, how I structured my presentation. Um, so first, I would like to give a very, very short introduction to AI in education in general. Then some tools I um, thought would be worthwhile using in, well, standard classroom projects, but then also a bit later in e-twinning. And I chose eight different ones. I decided for this bit to not um, go into detail about ChatGPT. That will be for later, and then you can actually um, yeah, combine the two if you like. So um, for um, item three on the agenda, I put um, some sample project ideas and then, um, yeah, a little bit of a workshop on how you can create effective prompts so that you get really good benefit from chat GPT. And then, um, yeah, I created a Padlet where you can work together on either some project ideas in terms of different subject categories, or you could also just try try um, your hands at prompting and then we have a little um, conclusion and Q&A session. So basically I try to be brief and do everything in 30 minutes so that you will be able to uh, have 15 minutes to exchange some ideas on the Padlet, um, but we see how that goes and we can be flexible about this part. Yes, so that's the quick overview over the agenda um, and in terms of um, yeah, the quick introduction to AI. I don't know if you're very familiar with um, AI already, um, whether you have worked with that before. Um, I found this quote quite intriguing. I don't want to go into detail about it because I assume you will have the presentation later or you have access to the transcripted version or the recording. Um, and I just found this quite intriguing that a year spent in artificial intelligence is now the presentation is gone. Should I share mine or? Because maybe you can see it on the screen, but I can't see it anymore. Sorry, Kira, should I share, share my screen? Let me just. Hi, sorry. Uh, my team ah, just okay. completely oh, okay. <laughs> turned itself okay. off for a second. I really don't know what happened there. <laughs> okay, no worries. It's we back are back to is. normal. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. I've got mine anyway. So, yeah, so I just found this quote quite intriguing that a year spent in artificial intelligence is enough to make one believe in God. And if you have worked with the previous ver version of ChatGPT, for example, only, or and now with the for the version four, um, I think it's a major difference. So yes, um, it's quite exciting, of course, also intriguing and a bit frightening what will happen. But yeah, I don't think we can stop it anyway. So it's maybe better to just 
yeah, embrace it or give it a go. So just some very brief ideas on how you could see AI's role in education. So first of all, um, I do think it, it makes some impact in um, personalized learning and interactivity in terms of that students get um, personalized um, feedback and that learners will also be engaged outside of the classroom. So um, they will learn in their own time and are maybe more, more motivated if they have kind of a private coach, if you use that function of AI. And also you could use it, for example, in STEM subjects and virtual labs um, and students could learn through trial and error um, in a safe environment that of course would have to be set up. So I do think it's it's more personalized um, also in terms of differentiation in the classroom. I think that's much more easier done um, than you normally would be able to. Um, it can also, and that's another thing in terms of personalized learning um, experiences, um, that AI is able to adapt to individual learning paces and styles. So um, yeah, it can just work with yeah, students' capacities, abilities more um, and in a more individual way than the teacher can if you have 30 students in your classroom. So if students need more practice, AI it can be the coach I just mentioned, or you could make different um, sets of questions for more basic problems or maybe more advanced problems. Um, and yeah, so that could work. Also in terms of reading habits, um, AI can assess um, the different genres that students like um, and also their reading levels and then provide um, yeah ideas, texts and so on. So I think that's definitely some yeah very good way of dealing with private um, and individual problems of students. Um, and also for diverse learning needs, um, I mentioned that already, that more gifted students maybe get higher, higher level thinking questions or maybe also like broader project ideas than other students who maybe have, yeah, their problems with uh, understanding the language. Um, if you think of um, all the different um, skills that are needed in different um, settings um, and also, AI can, for example, provide additional resources quite easily, especially um, if you use paid versions. But then I think most of the tools that I will present today are quite um, good in terms of their um, free versions. So these are just some ideas. Obviously, there's much more to it, um, but I wanted this to be more hands on and also more related to eTwinning, which is why I don't really want to go into all the details, how ben AI benefits like teaching. So, and I will concentrate on the benefits and not so much talk about um, all the problematic aspects of AI. So I don't think this is the topic today. That's why I wanted to keep this motivating also for you. Um, yeah, so first of all, maybe the A2s that I decided to work with throughout this webinar. Um, so it will basically always be the same aid in just in different contexts. Um, I try to, first of all, just give you an idea of what um, the tools are, then maybe a very little project idea that you can use like in a standard classroom, but you could also make an each winning project from it. A bit later on, we will have um, more ideas on each winning. And then if you work together on um, the Padlet or share your ideas or try your prompts, then maybe you will find some more ideas there. So the first one is um, Adobe Express. So I think you're all familiar with the Adobe Suit pro programs. Um, the first one is Firefly. So that's like a, a free generative AI for creatives. I mean, obviously there's other um, tools that you could use for creating images. Um, Canva is another one, but they have a teacher version, which I think is quite good. Um, and this Adobe Express with Firefly is for creating visuals and videos. So if you could, for example, do a geography project on cultural landscapes. You could do that in a geography class, but also I think it would work in arts, for example. Um, I, I just made some suggestions for like different age groups. So this is totally random. You could also address this with other students, I think. Um, and so students create create digital posters of various countries' landmark marks. And I think that's quite easily transformed into an e-twinning project as well. Um, when I did e-twinning, so I haven't done it for quite some time now, unfortunately, which is just because I don't really teach on a regular basis. But I found that especially 
well, I don't know about all the German curricula, but the, the Bavarian one is quite strict. So um, I try to create some more low-key project ideas um, that but yet that you can extend or transform as you need them. So um, I think this is ideal uh, because you could easily do this on the e-twinning platform, have students from different countries work together on the same poster, and then either make them engaged in intercultural com communication or also um, do presentations, whatever you would like to do with that very short idea. Um, yeah, the next tool will be Canva Classroom Magic. Um, which is a design tool for creating educational materials. When I did e-twinning or teaching, I also made students work with these tools. So I don't think the teacher is always responsible to create any material they use in their classroom. I found that students, especially of certain ages, like 13 to 15, that they actually really like um, to be the teacher and to be in charge themselves and to create some materials for their peers. So I think it's definitely worth trying. Uh, so here my example will be a literature class for ages 10 to 12 and you could design book covers or key scenes from like the book. Um, I think I did something similar in an e-twinning project and the students really, really loved it. We then collected all the covers and we collected all the key scenes and created some quizzes and so on. So you can really just extend this project much more, um, for example. Then um, I have another tool called... Hi, sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry to interrupt. Um, no worries. It seems that you have not taken control of the presentation. Uh, now, I am more than happy to keep moving with your text, but if you want, you can take control of the presentation and move the slides at your own pace. Oh, is it not? Because I'm on page six now and it... For me, it's still moved. on page five. Oh, let me move back. Is it now page six? Because for me, it's six. No. That's bizarre. No. Um, <laughs> I will just keep moving with your text. Okay. Then. All right. Yeah. Um, thank you. And if you could sometimes, if you uh, are deep in thought, just tell me when we are in next slide. Um, yes, then I will do that. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. <laughs> Right. Um, so, um, yes, my third um, tool will be Copy AI. Um, that's um, an AI writing tool, which I also th thought quite good, especially if you use it for, yeah, then writing projects, um, but in different like subjects. It doesn't have to be like the English class or like some language class where you would normally find this. Here, yeah. I, I thought it would be quite useful to use it maybe in the history class. Um, and then you create first person and narratives from historical figures' perspectives. So um, I don't really know how the curricula in history are in other European countries, but like in Germany, you would normally have like one topic, for example, the Middle Ages in year seven. Um, you could have different different persons from um, the yeah, Middle Ages and then um, attribute each of your students a different person or all the same so that you would see how different this really is in terms of what the students come up with. So I think you can really be very creative in terms of that. Here I just gave you some ideas of different persons in different um, eras like Cleopatra or Marie Curie. It really depends on what you want to do with it. But I think it's really good. You could also have a dialogue with um, AI, um, which I think is quite interesting. I tried that as well with ChatGPT, just to have a dialogue with the AI and see what it comes up with. So it's really, again, a very versatile idea and um, you could use another AI tool um, and so on. So um, yeah, my fourth AI tool will be Grammarly. Maybe you've come across that. That's really a tool that is very useful for um, yeah um, improving writing skills um, or grammar skills of students. So I think this is ideal to be used in foreign language classes, but then you could also, I think, use it in other subjects. Um, and I think it would also be really good to, to work together in intercultural groups like you do on the eTwinning platform anyway, and then maybe to set little tasks to each other and so on. You could write it to uh, use it to to improve essay writing and in general the language skills. So again, I think this is a very useful tool. Um, and then we can move on to the next slide um, for my next tools. So I will try to move it, but I don't know if you can see page um, seven now. 
Okira, would you maybe like to move it in case it's not there? So I can see page seven now. Yes, um, I have moved okay. it. Okay. Thank you. Um, so another one that I think is always good in, in e-twinning is if you if you can use quizzes. Um, so this is a platform for creating personalized quizzes and um, learning games. Um, just like I, I like to use learning apps a lot for e-twinning. Um, this is an AI version on it. So I think you know if you know learning apps how this works. Um, you can just create any kind of quiz in any kind of format once you're used to the platform. Um, you could also use it to to have feedback, like instant feedback. Um, and this is what I meant right at the beginning in the introduction, that it's really, really useful for more personalized and individualized learning. Yeah, um, then another um, AI, and again, I, I use different tools for um, student purposes rather than teaching ones, because maybe you're aware that there are also tools that teachers can use to to make their life easier, if you want, um, just to create lesson plans and so on. But this is not the focus again, but with brisk teaching, this will be possible too. So um, you can create um, assignments. Um, so this will be helpful for you as a teacher, but then also, of course, for the students. So for example, in science class, you could have a project um, on env environmental science and students can receive instant feedback on like their submissions, what what they wrote. Um, and this is much easier for you then because you don't have to provide the feedback um, like from scratch. You can use this for your own feedback or you can just say, OK, this is what what you need to improve on to really have the proper feedback from the teacher. You could make students um, work on their essays together, things like that, or like their submissions. So I think, again, this is ideal for an e-twinning project, really. Yeah, and then the last two ones, um, one is an interactive presentation tool. So I think um, on eTwinning, it's also really great to to have different tools for um, presentation. There, there were different ones in the past that I worked with, like Genially, for example. And this one is, of course, an AI based. So it would be ideal with, like, for example, a music quiz where you can present different um, musical instruments with slides and quizzes. Um, but yes, you could also like put this up a bit in terms of the um, level. So this could be higher level, it could be a lower level, it could be more interactive, more quiz based and so on. So this is also again a very versatile tool. Um, and the last one, this is maybe also interesting for teachers in terms of lesson planning um, and also generating educational content. But again, I think for older students, um, it also works that they are in charge, that they create their own um, materials. And I thought this would maybe be quite interesting, for example, for um, a social studies project on the European Union. Um, and then, yes, on the eTwinning platform, you could, for example, also create virtual debates um, and also do a little project on public speaking skills. So this is what this too would be quite um, useful, for example. So these are the tools um, I would like to work with today. Um, I also try to then, because these were quite general, again, you can just use them in the classroom. You don't need to use the e-twinning platform. Um, but here maybe this is more e-twinning related, but but then I think you can make any kind of classroom content into an e-twinning project really, especially if you don't need to work on it for well, a, a limited amount of time, for example, as in Germany sometimes. So um, here are some more project ideas on all of the ones. Um, and then, yes, I think we can get to the hands on part um, of the workshop in time. Um, so the first one is Adobe Express with um, Firefly. I thought about a historical events collage where students create visual narratives of the event so they can use that with any AI um, also to create the text. But then, of course, they could also just use Adobe Firefly to make the presentation and create the whole graphics around this. Um, it's a bit similar for the Canva Classroom Magic. Um, so I thought just a random idea, cultural folk tales illustrated. So if you have different e-twinning countries working together, it's quite nice to share some of their folk tales, for example. This also works with music, um, different things, um, any other narrative, really. Um, and then you could 
share this, you could create another like um, little booklet or whatever you want to do with that. Um, or you could um, implement an exchange or start an exchange with that idea. You could use it for an Erasmus project as well. Um, so I think that's quite versatile as well. Um, yeah, I found this quite interesting because this would also something um, would also be something that you could maybe do in the um, ethics or philosophy class, a sci-fi world building where um, students um, talk about dystopic um, elements and future societies with AI generated prompts. And this could then be, <coughs> excuse me, some kind of interactive storytelling session or also with Grammarly, um, this time travel correspondence with the historical characters. Um, yes, you could make mistakes on purpose, make students correct them, or you could also um, yeah, make the AI con correct the students' mistakes, of course. So that's probably the more yeah general approach that you would take. But again, this is very, very, um, this works in very, very many different ways. So um, I think this is quite um, a versatile tool too. Yeah, and then for quizzes, I think I, I mentioned this continental quest with maths already. So you could have math challenges based on European landmarks and then also have different um, levels of difficulty. Um, or also a sustainable cities project. Um, if you if you talk about environmental issues um, where students in groups then work on eco-friendly urban landscapes, for example, and then present their designs. Um, yeah, you could make them talk about the pros and the cons and then improve their designs and so on. So I think it's also quite quite good to work in an e-twinning project. Um, and for Q-Report, this would then be more music related. So you could have the presentations about different instruments and then also have quizzes and polls embedded what you have in e-twinning projects anyway, especially um, yeah, towards the end when you do the evaluation of the project. Um, and with edu um, again, this could be something about debating, so more language skills in terms of um, speaking skills, interpersonal skills, presentation skills, so soft skills that you need in any kind of job. Um, and yeah, you could you could you could make prepare students um, that prepare their argumentations, their arguments, and then have debates online. They could take different um, yeah, perspectives from different people um, in historical times and so on. So um, and again, once you have this idea, you can come up with any other idea. So I'm quite excited to see what you, what you will have um, on the Padlet later on. And um, I, I said this to Kira before, I thought the idea to have this Padlet is quite nice because you can constantly go back and forth and then leave your comment or maybe also your contact details just so that you find other eTwinners who are curious to try AI in eTwinning projects too. So I had a look at the platform, didn't find too many projects, so I would really be curious to see how that is implemented um, in an e-twinning project. Um, and since I rely on ChatGPT quite a lot, I didn't want to do this workshop without mentioning ChatGPT. Um, I'm using the pro version. I have been using it for quite some time. So ChatGPT4, where you can add um, documents and so on. And I think that's a major difference to the free version. So it's really, really very, very helpful in terms of, yeah, pretty much everything. So I'm almost using it on a daily basis now. Um, and in the UK, oops, there's, yeah, I think you can still see the name. I can move the, the picture then later. Um, oh, yes, maybe Kira can move it too. Then you can see the name, but yes, I can also put it in the chat then later. So in the UK, there's this person called Dan Fitzpatrick. He used to be a teacher too, and he's quite big in using AI in the classroom. And so with ChatGPT, in order to get really good results, um, it's it's good to know how you actually create a prompt. I mean, you can always get an answer from ChatGPT, but sometimes it's not a very useful answer or sometimes, yeah, it could be more precise. Um, and just I'm telling you that as well, just because you know this 
method. It usually works quite well, but sometimes ChatGPT has its own ideas of what it's doing. And yeah, sometimes it's a bit annoying, but this actually works quite well. So a prompt in general is like some kind of um, question that you put into ChatGPT so that you get the response you want. And Dan Fitzpatrick came up with this idea of um, PrEP. So PrEP is an acronym for prompt role explicit and parameters. Um, so prompt means you introduce your question with a prompt and then you give the AI a role. Um, and then you should be quite explicit in your instruction, meaning that you have to, well, have a detailed prompt. So it's usually better to have five sentences explaining what you really wanted to do rather than just say, yeah, you're this and that and give me some, some ideas on whatever. So this will give you some ideas, you will get a response, but it's not very specific. Um, yeah, and this is why he has the parameters as well in the end. Um, I will give you some examples um, how this looks like, because this is a bit vague too. I think prompt is easy, role is easy, but then what is really explicit? What are parameters? Um, but this really works um, quite well. So. Um, yeah, here you've got um, the prep method once again. So a prompt, explicit role parameters. And um, yeah, again, broke it down to these different um, ideas. I don't think we need to go through all of them right now because you will have the whole presentation anyway. Um, so the first one with Adobe Express with Firefly, just to go into that is um, the prompt will be design a poster that captures the essence essence of the renaissance period so that would be your prompt that is what you wanted to do but if you just leave it there it wouldn't be really specific so that's why we have a role for the ai for chat gpt which will be you are a digital artist tasked with blending historical elements with modern design techniques right um, and then explicit include at least three key figures or symbols from the Renaissance period in your design. Means it can also do more, but you want three and that's the minimum. And then the parameters will be the poster should be visually engaging and educational, suitable for a classroom setting. So this is what would should give you quite a good result. If it's not good enough, you can just tweak it, tweak it a bit, but just so that you get an idea. Or in terms of the Canva classroom ma magic, you would have create an illustrated page for a collective storybook about European myths as a prompt. Role of the AI or ChatGPT would be you are a storyteller and illustrator bringing a local myth to life. You could also say you are a teacher doing a class on whatever. You could say you are a student of arts. It, it changes with the role. You can experiment a little bit with giving it different roles for the same kind of topic or prompt, um, and it will give you different results. But as soon as it's got a role, it tries to really fulfill this role. Um, and usually I think it's quite good. It's also quite good, not just in English, but also in German. I tried a bit of French. It works in different languages. Um, um, I don't know about the other languages, how good it really is there. But in terms of um, yeah, grammar, content, um, idioms, it's really good. So um, yeah, then explicit would be illustrate the main event of the myth with a clear narrative in the artwork. So it means don't just deal with the side stories, we want the main focus and parameters. The illustration should be accompanied by a brief text that sets the scene or explains the myth. So this is quite specific. You could be even more detailed. Um, yeah, sometimes more details, especially at a later stage, um, confuse ChatGPT. <laughs> so it's interesting what sometimes happens, um, but we don't have time to go into detail there. It's about really trying and about trial and error. Um, and yeah, you could also use your hands on part of um, the workshop or the session to just experiment with different prompts for ChatGPT. Um, you could also, for example, make ChatGPT create a neat winning project idea for you, you would then have to feed in what is e-twinning. Um, so I, it's, I found that it's not enough to just give the link to the website yet. It can access it, but um, you need to maybe copy some 
yeah, some phrases or explain in detail that it's an online classroom for collaboration um, and then it gets the idea. So you could totally try that too. I think it would be quite, quite good. Um, yeah, and then you could work with what ChatGPT gave you in terms of having um, another e-twinning project. So I found, um, I, I did that for all of the different um, tools that I presented previously. Um, as I said, I don't think we need to go into um, detail with all of them. I also put them on the Padlet just so you got um, that too there. Um, so you can have a look at it later. Um, and it's just, I think this prep is quite catchy, so it's easy to remember um, as long as you remember what the acronym then stands for. Um, and it always works. So this is really a very good way of um, yeah, dealing with chat GPT. There are some other tweaks, but I think if you try this, um, this is really, really very, very helpful. Um, yeah, so um, as I said before, I try to speak very quickly just so that you would have some time to work together with other colleagues instead of a breakout room. Um, yeah, I thought this would be nicer on the Padlet. I left the comment function on. I basically split the subject in these four groups like languages, social sciences, one, which is religious education and philosophy, and then um, social sciences too will be history, economics, political science, sociology. Um, and thank you for sharing the um, Padlet already, Martha. Um, and the third one would be STEM subjects. Um, if you feel the need that there should be another category, we can totally add that. Um, it depends on what subjects um, all of you are teaching. Um, and Yes, we can totally adapt to that. So I thought it would be nice if you worked for, yeah, maybe 10 to um, 13 minutes. So I think we still have until um, 4.45 before the Q&A session starts. Um, and yes, you can just slot down your ideas. You can look through the ideas that I put there and add some comments, or you can leave your name and say, I'm totally interested in trying QReport for an e-twinning project. Or you can also try prompting ChatGPT for some of the project ideas or for your own ideas. You can use that as freely as you like. And um, I will also share my screen here with the Padlet. And of course, uh, we'll be in, um, where is it? Um, will be in um, the room if you have any questions here. So I will just quickly move to my Padlet. Um, this is what the Padlet should look like. Um, and as you can see, you also have the project ideas. Um, and just feel free to add your comments and everything here. I'm really um that's what it's there for you can comment later um so i will go back to my last two slides three slides yeah so um that would just be a very quick um recap and then um we can come back to the q a session for those of you who have some questions um yeah so like i tried to show that a ai enhances personalized uh, learning paths and also student engagement. Um, I also found that already with the e-twinning platform. So um, as soon as that was implemented in the classroom, um, students were just really more engaged. They put a lot of work into what they did um, because it was kind of a more creative outlet in terms of normal classroom work. Um, and yeah, you could also have a very different um, range of topics that can be enhanced by what other colleagues think. So it's it's really, really great. Um, that's why I loved e-twinning so much. And yeah, with the help of AI, this can be more interactive even and also maybe culturally rich and yeah, also engaging because you, in, you, you um, enter a dialogue with somebody who, again, has different ideas, but who can also sort of um, implement that straight away. So you get a result quite quickly, which I still find quite amazing how quick all of that goes. So if you have one question to ChatGPT, it doesn't even take a minute and you've got an answer. Um, and yeah, so I 
do think that is motivating for um, students today. Um, and you could also see AI as an educational alley. So this means like your little helper. That's really how I, oops, now it's gone again. I just share mine. Um, um, just quickly go to the last slide. That wasn't meant to be. Um, so you could really um, use this as a as a little helper um, by augmenting your own um, teaching and by yeah getting further insights or, or also if you need a quick answer even when you're actually in the classroom um, this I think works also really well. So you could use AI to create prompts but also to facilitate language practice um, exercises or also intercultural. Um, dialogue and of course that works in just like a normal classroom classroom situation but also in in each winning so I do think that um, AI is quite enriching despite of course all the problems that are still there um, um, you you can work around it if you really follow the GDPR regulations closely if you really maybe set up some kind of ethics codex um, that everyone has to stick to um, and I'm not just talking about plagiarism but also like yeah sensitive topics um, so you really need to um, yeah engage with AI maybe on a bigger level um, I don't know if you know that you can create custom customized chat GPTs uh, where you use prompts to kind of well, set a standard for what you would like to chat GPT to do. Um, and yes, I think you can all put in all your standards, your codex there, and then um, it it still is a bit of work in progress, but um, it helps to, to yeah make AI more safe. Um, but I also do think that um, AI really is promising in terms of very dynamic e-training projects and also better and yeah more engaging and motivating learning opportunities for students today yeah and i think we're at the last part of the session with um yeah q a and discussion so i'm really looking forward to the questions you might have or any ideas you would like to discuss Perfect. Uh, thank you very much, Suona, for this uh, inspiring presentation and um, sharing your knowledge and um, yeah, your your experience with us today. I, I'm sure the participants have learned a lot, uh, and I really, really enjoyed you. seeing your um, your hands on ideas for projects. I think that's going to be very beneficial for any uh, of our e-twinners to uh, to start their own projects. Uh, we've received many positive comments in the chat and um, also some questions. So let me start with one. Um, what are the, the next advancements that are expected for prompting use in education? Are there signs that it's going to be implemented in curricula, for example, or is it very much a project to project basis still? Um, I don't know for all of the European countries. I just know that uh, the U European Commission worked on like an ethics codex for AI. And in terms of education, I know that, well, I did some research some while ago um, concerning Germany and how AI was implemented. Um, and it looks like the different German um, counties have, yeah, because we have this federal system, so we have 16 different um, bodies working on that. Um, and it's not everybody is working on it. And some some countries are looking at, yeah, sharing or creating a best practice guide. Um, which means that some model schools are using AI in their teaching and then they will co collect all the information, all the findings that they have and then publish. I know for Bavaria they do that in 2025. The thing is, if it's good that it is done. Um, don't get me wrong on this. I do think it's good to, to have some schools um, yeah, working with AI. But then the problem is, if you share the findings two years later, uh, just the speed with which uh, AI advances at the moment. I don't really think these findings um, help teachers then in 2025 or 26, because we will be at a very different stage already. That, that's what I think. So 
but then I don't really know how how else you could deal with it um, because you have to to try it in order to know what it can achieve. Um, so no, I don't really I don't really know. Um, I think how I and I will be going back to teaching very likely in September. Um, so how I would go about it is just like I did with e twinning, probably try it out for myself just to see how it works in the classroom, but then maybe yeah, find some kind of regulation. If there isn't any official one, any one that is binding, just come up with your own in a way, because I do think you need to be careful with what you're doing. Um, because I think in education, it's still a different story than when if students um, experiment with AI on their own, which they will no doubt do. But then education, I think, serves a diff different purpose. But um, no, I don't think there's really anything like that um there's also a question about authorship um some of the students in um uh, classes are using ai and they quote unquote forget to mention that ai helped them are there any regulations that are um currently built for that is there a way that they can implement that it's again, I think it's a work in progress. I know what um, lots of um, especially universities do here in the UK, but also in Germany, um, that they have very strict um, standards that they use um, plagiarism detectors like Turnitin, things like that. But then that's again very individual. Some some even say they want, I think that was a university in Spain that said we want to abolish tests altogether because it's very hard to to see whether students really did this on their own. Um, so again, this is another work in progress. I think AI is on the one hand, it's still quite new, but it's then it's been there for some time already. Um, but I, I don't really think all the regulatory bodies can really keep up with it so fast, um, especially also with the involvement. So again, as I not that I have heard of anyone that is really, really binding for the EU for specific countries. I think people are still working on it. Great. And then one last more practical question to wrap us up. Um, you've you've shown us a lot of tools um, that we can use from um, yeah for all the different subjects. Um, and the participants are just wondering if um, they are also effective as their free versions. Um, for example, with ChatGPT, it's a very effective tool, even if you don't use the, the, the paid version of this. The tools that you've shared today, is that the same for that? Or would you advise the participants to sign up for it? I, th I think I would. Um, I, I think they are quite um, good um, in the free version. So I started with the free version of ChatGPT as well. I just I was curious and I thought let's just see how advanced it really is. What you ca what it can do with um, the paid version, and then yeah, of course you have to feed it some documents. The same for the paid version of these tools. Um, I think I would just give it a go because usually you have like seven days of a trial version for free um, and then of course experiment with that then as much um, as you like um, and then try to see whether this improved stage will really do anything for you because um, sometimes I don't think it's worth it. It really depends how often you use the tool and I think yeah I use ChatGPT quite a lot for different things um also for project management things and i think it's really great and it's definitely worth it because it it makes your life easier um but then i i, I don't know i probably wouldn't work on a daily basis with any of these design tools when i'm teaching so yeah it depends what floats your boat in a way what what do you like to do what is your teaching style as well and yeah so I would just try the free version as much as I can and then yeah see how that goes perfect well uh, thank you again uh, Simona and also thank you a lot for accepting our invitation and for sharing your expertise and your knowledge and for answering all of the questions um, before you. we uh, officially close this session, just a bit of practical information. Um, the evaluation forum has been shared by my colleague Marta in the chat. So please save this link and fill it out after the webinar has concluded. 
Um, and the second is about our upcoming professional development offer. Uh, we have some courses and webinars upcoming, so please visit our course catalog on the European School Education platform to not miss any exciting opportunities. Um, so let's move forward to the end slowly and wrap up. Thank you all so much for joining us today and many thanks again, um, Simona. Um, and I would like to leave the floor to you uh, for a final word, a suggestion, or a nice reflective question for participants. Um, yeah. Right. Thank you very much um, for inviting me. Um, it was really a pleasure to speak and also to prepare this presentation. Um, I'm really very excited to what yeah, AI will bring in the future and especially in connection to eTwilling because, yeah, I'm really looking forward to being back on the platform. Um, I really missed it. That was one thing I wanted to do for my role as well, to still be an eTwilling and Erasmus ambassador, but it didn't work out. So I'm really very happy and excited to be back. And thanks again for all of you being here and for the opportunity to speak here. Wonderful. Uh, well, thank you. And uh, I wish you all a wonderful weekend. And I hope to see you all at our next e-training webinar. Bye, everybody.